Спасибо. Пожалуйста, Никонов Вячеслав Алексеевич. Поведению. Дорогие друзья, уважаемые коллеги, три минуты назад Хиллари Клинтон признала свое поражение на выборах президента Соединенных Штатов, а секунду назад Трамп начал свою речь как избранный президент Соединенных Штатов Америки, с чем я вас всех и поздравляю. Уважаемые коллеги. Несколько часов назад в Соединенных Штатах Америки завершились президентские выборы. Мы внимательно следили за этой кампанией. Хочу поздравить американский народ с завершением избирательного цикла. А господина Дональда Трампа с победой на этих выборах. Мы слышали предвыборные заявления еще кандидата в президенты Соединенных Штатов. We have heard his electoral slogans when he was still a candidate of the president. Которые были направлены на восстановление отношений между Россией и Соединенными Штатами. And he spoke about resuming and restoring relations between Russia and the United States. Мы понимаем и отдаем себе отчет в том, что это будет непростой путь с учетом той деградации, в которых, в которой, к сожалению, находятся отношения между США и Россией. We understand that the way to that would be difficult, taking into account the current state of degradation of relations between the U.S. and Russia. И это, как я уже многократно говорил, не наша вина, что российско-американские отношения находятся именно в таком состоянии. And as I have repeatedly said, that is not our fault that the Russian-American relations are in that poor state. Но Россия готова и хочет восстановления полноформатных отношений с Соединенными Штатами. But Russia is ready and wants to restore the full-fledged relations with the United States. Повторяю, исходим из того, что это будет непростой путь, но мы готовы пройти и свою часть. I repeat, we understand that this will be a difficult way, but we are ready to play our part in it. И сделать все, чтобы вернуть российско-американские отношения на устойчивую траекторию развития. And do everything to return the Russian-American relations to the stable and sustainable development track. Это пошло бы на пользу как российскому, так и американскому народам. This would serve the well-being of both Russian and American peoples. И позитивно сказалось бы на общем климате в мировых делах, учитывая особую ответственность России и США за поддержание глобальной стабильности. And would have a positive effect on the general climate in the global affairs, taking into account the special responsibility of Russia and the U.S. to sustain global stability and security. Now are going to uh, want to do everything we can to help you succeed, because if you succeed, then the country succeeds. I very much look forward to dealing with the President in the future, including counsel. Well, I just had uh, the opportunity to have an excellent conversation with President-elect Trump. Uh, it was wide-ranging. We talked about uh, some of the organizational issues uh, in setting up a White House. We talked about foreign policy, we talked about domestic policy, uh, and as I said last night, my number one priority in the coming two months is to try to facilitate a transition that ensures our president-elect is successful.
спасти любой ценой. В изолированном отсеке подводной лодки вспыхнул пожар. С помощью пенной атаки курсанты военно-морского политеха ликвидируют возгорание. И это только первая часть практических занятий по борьбе за живучесть корабля. Теперь моряки должны устранить течь в корпусе субмарины. Вода прибывает, а значит, будущим подводникам нужно успеть в считанные минуты. Закрывают пробоину специальным пластырем. So let's go through very quickly some of the promises you made and tell us if you're going to do what you said or you're going to change it in any way. Um, are you really going to build a wall? Yes. They're talking about a fence in the Republican Congress. Would you accept a fence? Uh, for certain areas I would, but certain areas the wall is more appropriate. I'm very good at this. This is called construction. But so part wall, fence part will be, fence? Yeah, it could be, there could be some fencing. What about the pledge to deport millions and millions of undocumented immigrants? What we are going to do is get the people that are criminal and have criminal records, gang members, drug dealers. We have a lot of these people, probably two million, it could even be three million. We're getting them out of our country or we're going to incarcerate. But we're getting them out of our country, they're here illegally. After the border is secured and after everything gets normalized, we're going to make a determination on the people that you're talking about, who are terrific people. They're terrific people. But we're going to make a determination At that. But before we make that determination, lastly, it's very important. We want to secure our border. Trump and Putin vow to tackle ISIS together as they hold breakthrough talks after billionaires' election. The Kremlin said Putin called the president-elect yesterday to begin negotiations over how best to tackle to terrorism. President-elect Donald Trump and Russian leader Vladimir Putin have vowed to tackle ISIS together after holding breakthrough talks on the telephone. Less than a week after the billionaire's election, the Kremlin said Putin called Trump yesterday to begin negotiations over how best to tackle to terrorism. The Russian is reported to have said he is ready for dialogue with the U.S. on the basis of mutual respect, non-intervention into each other's internal affairs. According to the news agency Kremlin, Putin and Trump have agreed to work to channel bilateral relationships into constructive cooperation, to combine efforts to tackle international terrorism and extremism, and to continue contact by telephone and to work towards meeting in person. The importance of creating a solid basis for bilateral ties was underscored, in particularly by developing the trade economic component, the Kremlin said in its statement. It added that the countries should return to pragmatic, mutually beneficial cooperation, which would address the interests of both countries as well as stability and safety the world over. Read more Trump says Facebook and Twitter helped him win historic U.S. presidential election the two men will maintain contact by phone and seek to meet each other in person, the statement said. The call is a marked shift in relations between the two countries who have been at loggerheads under the Obama administration. Trump will take office on January 20, replacing Obama whose relations with Putin have become tense over various issues including Syria and Ukraine. The thawing of tensions could have implications for American whistleblower Edward Snowden, who has been in exile in Moscow since stealing U.S. spy details and publishing them online. In a statement, Trump's office said, President-elect Trump noted to President Putin that he is very much looking forward to having a strong and enduring relationship with Russia and the people of Russia. It added that Putin called the billionaire to offer his congratulations on his election. It comes as top ISIS commander Abu Omar Khorasani has said Trump is a complete maniac who will aid the terror group's cause. Khorasani, based in Afghanistan, said the president-elect's shock victory over Hillary Clinton will help ISIS recruit new fighters, especially youth in the West. Extremists plan to use Trump's campaign comments about Muslims as a propaganda tool to bolster their ranks in the Middle East or inspire attacks abroad. Read more Donald Trump gives top White House job to ex-boss of far-right white nationalist Haven website at one point during his lengthy presidential campaign, 
the Republican candidate and business mogul called for a ban on Muslims entering the U.S. Khorasani told Reuters, this guy is a complete maniac. His utter hate towards Muslims will make our job much easier because we can recruit thousands. Trump has promised to wipe out radical groups like ISIS during his presidency, although he has offered few details on how he plans to accomplish that. Putin and Trump's phone call also comes as U.S. Internet companies including Facebook Inc. and Amazon Inc. have sent the president-elect a detailed list of their policy priorities. These include promoting strong encryption immigration reform and maintaining liability protections from content that users share on their platforms. The letter sent today by the Internet Association, a trade group whose 40 members also include Alphabet's Google, Uber and Twitter, represents an early effort to repair the relationship between the technology sector and Trump, who was almost universally disliked and at times denounced in Silicon Valley during the presidential campaign. The Internet industry looks forward to engaging in an open and productive dialogue, reads the letter, signed by Michael Beckerman, president of the Internet Association, and seen by Reuters. Some of the policy goals stated in the letter may align with Trump's priorities, including easing regulation on the sharing economy, lowering taxes on profits made from intellectual property and applying pressure on Europe to not erect too many barriers that restrict U.S. Internet companies from growing in that market. Other goals are likely to clash with the president-elect, who offer numerous broadsides against the tech sector during his campaign. Read more top ISIS commander calls Donald Trump a complete maniac who will make terror groups fight much easier they include supporting strong encryption in products against efforts by law enforcement agencies to mandate access to data for criminal investigations, upholding recent reforms to U.S. government surveillance programs that ended the bulk collection of call data by the National Security Agency and maintaining net neutrality rules that require Internet service providers to treat web traffic equally. Related video, Donald Trump promises to still build a wall and deport millions.